Sound design. Yeah. So in the last video, we discovered that we are not phase aligned through the crossover region with this main sub combination. So in this video, let's talk about what to do about that. One thing that I didn't understand for a long time is that I thought when you had a phase trace, if you add a delay, the whole thing just went up or down like this together. If I add delay, the whole thing doesn't move down together, it actually just gets steeper, right? Uh, up like this, like it's connected here at the end and then it'll get steeper. So let's play with that a little bit so you can see what I mean. So let's add some delay and see what happens. Let's add two milliseconds. Let's add three milliseconds. Okay, so you kind of see what I mean. It didn't move all by the same amount, right? So up here, it only moved about 80 degrees, but down here, it moved about 120 degrees. So it's subtle, but just keep that in mind that adding delay is going to bend it down, not move the whole thing down at the same time. All right, let's take off that delay. Cool. So I've already ruled out a polarity inversion. And then my next question is, I guess I could either physically move the speaker to change the delay to the microphone or add delay on the output. And in this case, since I have the speakers lined up grill to grill flush right next to each other, I think what I'm gonna do is add delay and then I'll just have that as a setting in the future and I'll remember when I deploy these, when these speakers are right next to each other, they need this amount of delay to be phase aligned through this crossover region uh, to match this target that we talked about. When they get deployed into the field and they're far apart, then I can look at the distance separation and I can recalculate what that delay offset needs to be. Okay, so enough of that. Let's look at how much delay we would need to add to bend this main measurement down to match the sub. The probably, I don't know, dirt quick, but definitely the uh, easy way to do this is just to add delay until the pictures match. Let's do that first. Okay, looks like we're halfway there. Okay, we made it up in this area, but we still want to be matched down here as well. All right, now we went too far in this area, but we're still within 60 degrees. So now I could fine tune a little bit more and really find a good balance where both sides are as close as possible. For now, I think I'm just gonna go with 2.8. Okay. So 2.8 milliseconds got us from this blue line up here all the way down to where this pink line is here. And now we are aligned within 60 degrees throughout the crossover region. Um, and I can stop now, but I wanna go back and show you one more method for calculating this that might be useful for you. So let's, uh, actually I'll leave that delay there and I'll just hide this other trace for a second. So here's where we were, right? If we wanted to calculate exactly the time offset at a particular frequency between two different speakers, we can use the formula delta phase divided by 360 divided by delta frequency. What frequency is that gonna be? Well, a lot of times it would be right in the middle, okay, to give us an offset. But 
Let's see what would happen if we pick a couple different spots. Let's do the middle here and then let's do up here at the top where it's the worst. All right, so at 100 hertz, the main is 139.8 degrees. So let's call that 140. And the sub is at 47.4. So now we have a pretty easy calculation to do. 140 minus 47 is 93. So we know our delta phase, and now we can just divide by 360 and divide by whatever this frequency was, 100. So 93 divided by 360 divided by 100, and then for milliseconds multiplied by 1,000, we get 2.58, 2.6. So let's say 2.6 milliseconds. And let's see what happens when we put that in. 2.6 milliseconds. Let's measure the main. And there we go, perfectly aligned at 100 hertz where I wanted it to be. And this actually looks like it's gonna work really well because down, down here we can see we're a little bit low, up here we can see a little, little bit high. But this has worked well for me a lot in the field. I find what the crossover region is, I find what the center of that region is, and then I use this formula to quickly calculate what the delay is gonna be so that I don't have to put it in, wait for the trace, put it in, wait for the trace, and like keep moving things around. Either way is totally fine. Um, this math is a little bit quicker um, and it's super easy to remember. In fact, it is on the back of my aiming triangles business card and i'll put a link to that in the notes below this video oh we forgot to look at um both of them together now that we did the alignment okay <laughs> turn on main and sub together go seems to have gotten worse what is wrong here oh there we go there we go. Okay, so this is our entire crossover region. Here, let me stop talking. So here we go. Through the crossover region, we now have some amount of summation. In the areas where the amplitudes are closest to each other, we have the most amount of summation, right? In fact, we have six decibels of summation. In these areas where they're barely interacting at all, we still have around a dB of summation, okay? We did it! <laughs> One of the reasons why it's so hard to make these videos is that this kind of operation, the main subalignment, is a little bit different with every case, right? But that's why I try to make things really easy on myself, especially when I'm just practicing at home by putting the subs right next to each other, um, putting the microphone really close. And I'm not gonna do my very first main sub alignment like out in the field with a bunch of noise and a bunch of reflections and things like that. Please try this at home yourself and let me know if this uh, method works for you. And if you have another method that you use, let me know that too. I'm always trying to improve my own methods and share those with other people. So comment below this video and tell me how you do your main sub alignment. Sound design. Yeah.